This is a new create mod add-on called Crowns, which stands for creating rotation operated with nuclear science. As the name suggests, this mod adds nuclear reactors into the mod along with components like the heat exchanger, which can be used to make multi-stage boilers and condensers, and using that you can produce steam, which can then drive turbines and produce a lot of stress units. There's also new mechanics like the dryness factor and compression of fluid, so it's an interesting one and without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's start by taking a look at the different components that this mod has to offer. And in the creative tab, they're not that much. We have the heat exchanger along with the steam input and the steam collector. We have the turbine, compressor and different variants of uranium which will give us the fuel assembly. Let's start with the heat exchanger first. Now this one will just absorb heat from its surrounding and uh, transfer it to the fluid inside it. So if I place down magma blocks, its temperature will go up. However, this only applies to the block directly touching. Replacing the magma blocks with lava, its temperature will go even higher cause lava is hotter than magma blocks. The opposite also holds true. If I replace all of the lava blocks with ice, its temperature will come down to 9 degrees Celsius and packed ice will bring the temperature down all the way to negative 25 degrees Celsius. So the heat exchanger is basically as the name suggests, it transfers heat from the surrounding to the fluid which are present inside it. And blaze burners will take this all the way down to 1000 degrees Celsius comparable to a nuclear reactor. The rate of flow of water inside your heat exchanger is going to play a big part in determining the efficiency of your system. Because if water flows fast, then it won't have enough time to absorb all of the heat from the heat exchanger. And the opposite also holds true. Here I have set the pumps to a speed of 1, which means water has enough time to absorb all of the heat from the heat exchanger and the temperature goes up to 100 degrees Celsius. Also you can see the dryness factor starting to increase. Right now it's at 25% which means we have 25% steam in our system. Now if I increase the speed to 32, let's say, you will see the temperature starting to drop. Because the water doesn't have enough time to absorb all of the heat now. And once again if I reduce the speed to 8, temperature will start going up again. So this is how it is and another solution for this is that you can increase the number of heat exchangers and the heat source that you have. So I'm going to get the heat exchangers all the way up to 4 with 16 blaze burners around it and once again make a similar setup and set the pump speed to 1. And with that water will have sufficient time to completely get converted into steam, superheated steam I should say, cause 1600 degrees Celsius with a dryness factor of 100%. Now a good way to use all of that steam would be to put it in a steam input. Here I have placed down the steam input uh, and it is filling up with steam and if I now start placing turbines in the front then the turbines will slowly go up in speed and will give us more stress units. The maximum amount of turbines you can have is 16 and you will notice one thing. Steam at the starting of the nozzle is white but as we go further away from it, it gets turned into a shade of blue. This is cause it is losing energy and it is becoming more and more condensed. It's losing pressure basically. So at the end, after 16 turbines, it is going to become useless. However, we are getting what over 400,000 stress units. And if I get the speed down to four, this will increase the temperature, the energy of the steam. And as you can see, our stress units go up. However, there is a delicate balance between the flow rate and uh, yeah, the amount of energy this entire water can capture because you can see the maximum performance we got was when the pump value was at 4. Also you can collect all of this steam but uh, for that you need to place it after the 15th turbine because at the end all of the steam is just dispersed. So yeah and after collecting all of the steam its pressure is going to drop down to basically zero atmospheric pressures. However, you can reduce its temperature by basically reversing the process that we did. We used blaze burner to heat up. Now we are going to use pack dice to cool down the steam from 98 degrees Celsius to the atmospheric temperature, the normal ambient temperature, which is 26 degrees Celsius. So right now we are at 64. I'm going to add some more pack dice and that will ensure we have 26 degrees Celsius. So that is how you can make a condenser. Now compressors can be used to pressurize either water or the fluids inside this mod back to the original value. So right now the water vapor that we have is at zero atmospheric pressure. Using a two-stage compressor we can get it back to one. It didn't really work out in this scenario. I am going to show you an example later on where this worked perfectly. However, what you can also do is pressurize the feed water. So right now I'm going to set the pump speed to 4 with two-stage compressor. The first one will compress it to 8 atmospheric pressure, the second one to 64 atmospheric pressure. 
and absorbing all of the heat, uh, we are getting less power. Why is that? Because when water is pressurized, its boiling point goes up. So it can absorb more energy. However, we will need to increase the amount of heat exchangers that we have. So I have doubled the amount of heat exchangers and now it will have sufficient heat. So you can see till the very end, the vapor has not changed color. It is still white. It has not turned blue. That is how you can pressurize water. You can superheat it to basically get the nearly the same amount of energy that you can produce. Let's come to nuclear reactors now. Uh, these require moderators in the middle and on the sides to work. So water can work as a moderator. However, blocks of coal, they are more efficient at that and their activity is measured in megabequerels. If I increase the amount of fuel assembly that we have and place down coal blocks, then they will be activated slowly like this. And uh, yeah, they will now start to heat up. And uh, if there is a heat exchanger inside them, then it will also heat them up. However, my entire experience with the nuclear reactor was not very pleasant. I couldn't really get it to work properly. I first tried to make it how the ponder says to make it uh, stage by stage. But here you can see it. It went boom. Even though I had water going inside the heat exchangers in the middle. Uh, in the next case, what I did was I first basically connected the output of all of the heat exchangers into a steam input. So I thought if there was a flowing water or steam, that would be more efficient in taking out all of the heat of the nuclear reactor. So here like this, and now I started building the nuclear reactor stage by stage, but once again, it went boom. So I have made the Atlasama proud today. And uh, yeah, there it goes. Uh, it's the villager's fault, I guess. Anyways, the only thing I managed to do or make it work was I waterlogged the top part of the heat exchanger so water can flow down and hopefully also get all of the other stages to work. This kind of work, waterlogging each and every single stage of heat exchanger didn't really work out for me but water was still not being converted into steam. Uh, not very nuclear reactor like I would like to say. So yeah I am going to experiment some more with this nuclear reactor and get back to you guys. Now finally, I would like to show you a closed loop of a heat exchanger setup, a two-stage heat exchanger setup. So here I have my feed water and if I start feeding it into the heat exchanger, then it's going to go inside the first stage here. And uh, inside this first stage, 70, 69-70% of it is going to get converted into steam with a temperature of 208 degrees Celsius. Then it's going to go inside the second stage. So from the bottom here, we are pumping it to the top. Here you can see both of these stages on the left is stage 1, right is stage 2 and in the second stage here the water temperature goes all the way to 600 degrees celsius roughly and it gets completely converted to steam with the dryness factor you can see 100% and we are getting over 450,000 stress units here. At the very end we are collecting all of the vapor with 61% dryness factor and this is going to get condensed inside this once again two stage heat exchanger setup. Uh, as we move further to the second stage, you will see temperature starting to go down and pressure is at zero atmospheres. So we have condensed it into water, however, it is very low pressure. So I am going to pressurize it using three stage compressor like this. And in the third stage, we are back to one atmospheric pressure. So water is back at 20 degrees Celsius with one atmospheric pressure. And this is a closed loop which can run constantly. And you can also produce power roughly what uh, 10,000 fe per tick with it i would like to say that compressors are kind of broken in this mod right now so here you can see a two-stage compressor setup that i have and once we start making water this is going to make water indefinitely even if i get rid of the main tank that we had we only put one bucket of water however we are making more than one bucket of water continuously I tried contacting the developer of this mod about this issue. I haven't got any reply from him. So yeah, that's that. However, yeah, this will or it could break your build. It has done for me several times. So yeah, there is this issue. Be careful about that. But overall, this mod is very interesting for those of you who have learned power plant engineering and who like this kind of stuff. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, peace out and stay safe my dudes.